Jesus said to Nicodemus, no one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of the Triumph of the Cross. Well, uh, there was a class of uh, elementary kids and the religion teacher started asking the, her uh, pupils, where is Christ? Where can you find the Lord? Then this elementary kid, one of the kids pointed out, there. <laughs> so the teacher looked back and saw the cross. Yeah. So that's where you can find Christ, hanging on the cross. And every time I celebrate this Mass or this uh, feast, I always reminded of another story. Not only that uh, we can find Christ on the cross, but uh, there is this man who had a personal issues in life and some very serious family problems that he went crazy, desperate, hopeless. So out of uh, his confusion, desperation, he climbed up a very tall tree. And then, of course, started uh, walking on the branches. And people were shocked because this man is a good man, loved by the neighbors and friends. But now he started to play with death. Uh, after climbing that very tall tree, uh, started walking on the branches. And at one point, he slipped. <laughs> And uh, he almost uh, fell down, but he clinged to the branch and uh, it's visible that actually he's not totally crazy because he was also afraid to, to die. But he was crazy enough and desperate enough to contemplate uh, committing suicide. So they called the chief of police and he came. And as a policeman, of course, he has his way of settling the issue by threatening the person. If you will not come down, I will arrest you and put you to jail. <laughs> but how can you threaten a man of incarceration or imprisonment if he is ready to die? Uh, then they called for the mayor. And the mayor has his way of settling the issue by offering the person a job. I'm the mayor of the town. Then whatever your problem, may it be financial or personal, family problems, we can talk about it and I can offer you a job, a solution. But still the man did not come down. So when they looked at the man, then uh, uh, considering death, let us call for the parish priest. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, there's a chance for him to die, so at least he would receive the sacrament. So they called for the parish priest. His name is, no, not Father Adrian, because this priest is already old, and he looked at the man, and then he tried to call the attention of the man. So when the man already has his attention, he made this sign. <laughs> so the man was uh, shocked and uh, surprised. He looked at the priest and the tree, and the priest, then the tree. <laughs> then slowly, uh, they made the decision to climb down. And the people were so happy, they clapped their hands. Then they congratulated the priest. Really, Father, you are experienced. Yeah? And you uh, make uh, good use of the power of the cross. <laughs> and the priest said, what cross? The one you made, the sign, the, the cross. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that is not what I meant by making that gesture. I just told the man to listen to me and come down immediately, otherwise I will cut the tree. <laughs> and 
And apparently, the man understood. Yeah, understood. Well, if we look at the cross as something magical in its power, then we are just like those people around that uh, scenario who misinterpreted the old priest of its uh, practical impact or import. The meaning of his gesture was really to save the man, to calm down. Otherwise, I will cut the tree. Then, threatened by death, of course, he calmed down. The thing is, uh, yeah, we have this way of looking at the cross at its face value. The face value is suffering, death, and then, of course, defeat. And that was the perception of St. Peter or the apostles at the beginning before Pentecost. That's why they were so afraid, desperate, hopeless, because they uh, pegged on our Lord Jesus Christ to be the Savior. But what happens now? He is dead. He is crucified. Now, what happens to our hope? There is no more hope. Because after all, he is gone. He is dead. And that is looking at the cross at its face value. But actually for us Christians, especially for us Catholics, we looked at the cross, uh, the man hanging on the cross, at our Lord Jesus Christ, not a person defeated, but rather triumphant. Because for us the cross is not a sim symbol of defeat, but of victory. It's not uh, a symbol of death, but of life not even of God's indifference that he abandoned the Son, but rather of God's love. And then we begin to understand the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, that no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And before he died, he called us his friends. And that is the cross for us, so meaningful, so salvific. But at times, of course, when we look at our problems, our own share of difficulties, we begin to doubt even its purpose and its meaning. Then we have to look again. What is suffering for us Christians? Well, for some of our brothers, suffering is something that uh, totally bad and should be avoided if possible. But for us, we welcome suffering because it can be salvific. It can bring out the best in us. But there are, of course, two kinds of suffering, difficulties in life. One is God-given, and the other one is man-made, the one we make ourselves. Of course, those problems, those difficulties in our lives, we have to let go the problems that we make ourselves. Like, for example, a person complaining, my life is now beginning to be meaningless because my children are angry with me and my wife is also angry because he had his affair. That's man-made. That's not God-given. If we were to suffer and we have to endure pain, let it be for God, for his purposes. And then it will be really salvific, purifying, uh, and it will be uh, a cleansing sacrifice. And that will really be a meaningful one for us. So we have first to identify our sufferings. For example, a battered wife, one of the things that uh, taught to this battered wife is to let go of the suffering. Because sometimes people are simply accepting suffering at its face value. No, there are suffering that we should not undergo, but there are suffering that we have to undergo. And these sufferings are the essential ones, the ones that will bring out the best in us. For example, students, of course, we need to suffer and to work hard studying uh, out of gratitude for the parents or, or whoever uh, provided us that opportunity to study. Then we have to do our best. And in doing that, of course, we have to suffer, to sacrifice. Oftentimes, we see people only in their glorious days, but we oftentimes miss the fact that they were victorious simply because they endured the pain of, like the athletes, they enjoyed the pain of practicing 
uh, and really uh, sharpening their skills. One time uh, in a championship game, uh, the late uh, Kobe Bryant was injured and he was forced to go to the dog uh, house, uh, to the uh, quarters, uh, players' quarters. But it was the, their final game. But he tried his best uh, before that, but it was, the pain was so excruciating. You can see it on his face. While in the dugout, he contemplated, undecided. No, I will not, uh, I will not uh, end this championship game sitting down. So he went back and asked the coach to send him in. And then there really you can see him playing. In the midst of the pain, he overcame that pain and then really worked hard. And then to cut the story short, they won the game. Was it because of his best step? No, not at all. Because, of course, his game was not as perfect as before, as good as before. But what happened was he inspired his team because they were not injured. But sometimes they are already losing hope and they are already so tired, overwhelmed by uh, fatigue. But their teammate, Kobe Bryant, was there uh, enduring the pain and really doing his best despite the pain. And this is what is suffering for us. There are things that we have to endure in order to bring out the best in us. And. Uh, this uh, triumph of the cross is a reminder for us that this is the way that our Lord wants us to follow. If we were to enter heaven, we have to pass Calvary. And that's why the invitation is to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow him. The thing is, we have to make distinction and we have to be very careful, selective. We only endure the pain the suffering that God has given or prepared for us to endure. But those suffering that we make ourselves, we have to let go because they are not meant for us. They are meant, meant to, to bring out the best in us, but rather to crush us and bring out the worst in us. So there we have the model. If we would like to find Christ, look at the cross. If we, will, if we want to enter heaven, then let us follow his way. The cross is God's manifestation of his triumph, not his defeat. His life, not his death. His love, not God's indifference. Amen.